All right. All right. Okay, we start uh, now, I suppose, right? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today is the second uh, in the series uh, on digital transformation of business education that Peregrine Global and uh, CIA Trust uh, together are offering in India. At present, they, there are five uh, such workshops, and this is the second one um, in the series. And this one relates to the Global Business Education Assessment Examination, which is pretty uh, important and useful for the AOL uh, as we go. So last uh, session was on AOL, Assurance of Learning. And this session um, is uh, going to focus uh, very um, closely on uh, the GBA, uh, GBE uh, assessment. Uh, and uh, uh, I think we should get on with this. <laughs> okay, Alima, so yes. thanks a lot. Great. Great, thank you, Tatatri. Uh, good morning, everyone. And I see some people who are joining us uh, outside of India. So if you're in India, good morning. If you're joining us from outside of India, uh, depending where you are, good afternoon, good evening. And um, so we are your workshop facilitators. Thank you, SEA Trust, for your partnership with Peregrine Global Services uh, and bringing these webinar series to our partner institutions. Uh, I'm Alima Jamian Soren and I'm the Director of Asia Pacific Operations here at Peregrine Global. And I'm speaking to you today from our Tokyo office. And um, as um, those of you who know us, we have our headquarters in the US and the state of Wyoming, and we have offices in Paris, and of course, uh, Tatatri, Mr. Tatatri Raman with SEA Trust in India. So thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, there are multiple ways to participate in today's workshop. So we'll have some poll questions. Please answer uh, these questions when they're presented. And you can ask a question, make a comment in the chat uh, area. Thank you, Tatatri, for helping us out with uh, uh, keeping uh, track of uh, the questions and comments that will be coming. And uh, I will plan to leave a Q&A uh, at the end of the presentation. So if you have questions that could be answered at then, please jot them down and ask them then, or again, you can type in your questions in the question panel. And if you don't get your questions answered, uh, we will be happy to follow up uh, through email addresses that you have provided us in registering for this uh, webinar. So to start with, I would like um, to uh, launch a polling. So if those of you who have attended um, last Saturday's um, workshop, we have talked about um, putting together uh, assessment plan, right? Why uh, you need to measure learning outcomes and how do you write uh, objective uh, programmatic learning outcomes? So the question I wanted to start with is, um, do you objectively measure your learning outcomes? And um, if you have some um, assessment plans and measurement tools that you're able to track, excellent. If you feel, you know, well, we kind of have some learning outcomes and some are measured, some are out there, uh, that's your answer. And then at this point, uh, most of our partner institutions, especially in India, you're very familiar with the quality assurance processes and programs. So um, I'm kind of uh, uh, counting on the fact that no one is probably going to pick on, and actually rightly so, um, you do have, um, so I see that 67%, you have your uh, learning outcomes measured uh, objectively. And then a third of you, you know, you're sort of in that somewhat, uh, uh, area. So I'm going to um, then move on. Thank you for responding. And then so let's kind of review uh, why are learning outcomes important in higher education, right? We talked about it last week, just to kind of um, refresh your memory. Uh, as an institution, of course, as a program, uh, you are expected to have some rigorous measurement tools in order to better understand the degree to which students have retained um, knowledge, right, what you have taught them. And then you're going to use the results of these uh, uh, measurements in order to uh, make improvements in your educational programs, right? 
And then as an institution, you are striving to uh, engage your students and to deliver to your students and uh, to really be uh, transparent with your students, with your parents, employers, and other stakeholders in sharing with um, them in terms of uh, where your students are in learning and as far as uh, reaching your particular programmatic uh, and institutional learning outcomes. Um, when we talk about assessment, there is a formative versus summative, as you know all too well. And the formative is typically course level based assessments. And uh, programmatic is uh, something that uh, occurs at the end of the student's learning process, right? And you're going to use the programmatic or summative level assessments for uh, academic accountability, but also improve the learning goals, the results, right? And uh, most typically with the summative assessments, you are conducting pre and post, and then uh, you are able to measure students' integrated knowledge, right? Retained knowledge. And uh, with the course level, you are familiar, you know, intrinsically with them and you're conducting it in your regular coursework. Just to refresh your memory again, uh, there are direct measures of student learning and uh, typically uh, they are again um, conducted uh, to measure students retained knowledge and competencies and skills students are expected to acquire at the end of an academic program of study. Right. And these outcomes are typically written to capture the expected results of students retained knowledge, so expected student learning outcomes. And we uh, typically measure them as we could measure them as a stand alone, as well as as an embedded assessment into your particular course or a module. And um, the whole point of conducting, of course, measurement of learning outcomes and student results is to support your continuous improvement processes at the institution. Uh, as you know, with some of your quality assurance uh, organizations, there's an expectation to measure uh, student learning through indirect measures, right? And those could be based on assessments, uh, students self-reported data and assessments uh, as they relate to attitude, perceptions, and feelings and values of their learning. And uh, you can, of course, use these indirect uh, measures in the form of surveys, interviews, course evaluations. And a lot uh, of the times you're also collecting as an institution retention and graduation and placement related data, which are all indirect measures. But also you use these measures uh, quite often in, con in conjunction with your direct measures of learning to, at the end of the program, of course, improve the quality of your academic programs. We have talked about uh, the six steps to continuous improvement of student learning or the cycle of continuous improvement learning. And um, as you know all too well, of course, assessment of student learning is a key component for uh, meeting both institutional and international programmatic accreditation requirements. And we're all very familiar with the challenge of finding the right assessment tool. And you want that tool to be flexible, comprehensive, right, affordable. And at the end of the uh, day, you want to have a tool that is flexible enough that meets your particular institution's needs. And as uh, was shown by the poll results, you know, it looks like 33% of you are uh, not fully where you want to be with your particular assessment uh, plan. Uh, I've mentioned in our last uh, workshop that um, you can meet uh, the assurance of learning requirements with the uh, two offerings that we have from Peregrine. One is global business education assessment, and the other one is soft skills assessment tool that we call value skills. And uh, here I have another question. Uh, so uh, to jumpstart our um, uh, discussion on global business education assessment tool, uh, I would like to ask you, um, do you have any of the assessment instruments at your academic program that are used for measuring your learning outcomes that could be either internal assessment tool that's developed within your institution by your faculty? Or uh, are you utilizing uh, some kind of uh, instruments that might have been developed from outside of your institution? And then in terms of direct and indirect measure that we talked about, right? Um, do you have them, are you utilizing them, direct measurements or indirect measurements? And most of you have, of course, student satisfaction surveys. And uh, within the student satisfaction survey, you can have uh, questions about student learning. And I see um, 
some of your answers coming in. And um, yep, uh, yeah, nearly all of you have internal instruments as expected. And uh, you have uh, half and half between direct and indirect measure. And I see that we don't have um, in the audience who might be using uh, external measures. So um, direct, indirect. So I'm going to let it go for a little longer so you can have uh, answers. And um, so good, good. So you have some uh, instruments that are using. and. Um, Maybe uh, you could uh, improve on the external measure based on the responses, because uh, some of the creditors require an external measure, right, which would be objective, which uh, takes a bias out and could be pure, um, you know, um, measurement of actual learning versus some of the final course grade related assessments that contain um, items other than learning of the student, right. So that's a good response. Thank you very much. And then, so global business education assessment that uh, Peregrine offers, right? We call it GBE assessment. It is designed for uh, evaluating entire programs. And it provides you uh, with a meaningful, cost-effective, and a practical solution to uh, evaluating your programmatic learning outcomes. Uh, and you can conduct it uh, and compare the results to multiple external aggregate pools when you use a Peregrine's tool. Uh, you can, of course, conduct a deep dive internal analysis of your individual program. And uh, we wanted to you know, measure the students retained knowledge, right? The learning that occurs uh, by learners uh, during their studies at your particular institution. And then as you uh, utilize this particular instrument, you are able to address multiple accreditation requirements. So GBE assessment is a customizable program level assessment solution with in-depth reporting and data analysis to help satisfy your assurance of learning requirements. So when we talk about the global business education assessment, right, uh, you are able to measure and build skills that are related to critical thinking and problem solving, right, leadership skills and competencies and also development of it, um, also related to career management. But also we are able to address career readiness competencies uh, with the use of these assessment tools by identifying where the gaps are in performance due to perhaps you know, conceptual errors or wrong conclusions. And we have the response distractors report that gives you great insight uh, in helping you with the knowledge gaps. Um, also measuring students' proficiency in concepts and practices of leadership, and then demonstrating students' technical knowledge and industry-specific competencies. So with the Global Business Education Assessment, GBE, you're able to cover the hard technical skills, right? And when it comes to soft skills or uh, workplace readiness skills, uh, we have a value skills. And uh, our next session, one of the next sessions will be a deep dive into um, that particular instrument. So the GB uh, assessment solution provides you with a normed a summative tool and it is used for internal and external programmatic evaluation. Uh, it is a customizable solution and you can very easily manage it and effectively integrate it into your business program. And then as I mentioned uh, in um, you know, meeting your particular goals and also helping you to meet your creditors requirements, we are measuring retained student knowledge associated with your particular program's learning outcomes. And then um, as with uh, most and all of our uh, solutions, we are here to help you with the continuous improvement process and also meeting your accreditation uh, requirements, be it international, be it national or programmatic or specialized related to learning outcomes assessment, right? Quality assurance. And for some of them, uh, external academic benchmarking. And as you know, we work with uh, uh, all major international business accrediting organizations and uh, with AACSB and AMBA and ACBSB and IACB. Uh, so you, uh, if you wanted to learn more about each of the individual programs um, accreditation requirements, we are very familiar with them. We work in consultation with them and with our partner institutions. And in the case of AACSB, they are asking for direct 
an indirect external measure of learning, AMBA has some strong principles on uh, assurance of learning and measuring learning outcomes. As you know, ACBSB requires, um, uh, what is it, external um, uh, direct measure of student learning, also comparative measure of learning. That's where the external benchmarking comes in. And then IACB has uh, key performance indicators that come mostly in the form of critical thinking and more of a soft skill side. So with the GBE, uh, the key features I wanted to highlight today are, uh, first is the customization, right? You build a specific customized assessment instrument that is aligned with your particular learning outcomes by selecting from um, the database of 12 available core business and management topics. And in the case of India, we have uh, three India specific topics. Uh, you can easily integrate the assessment directly into your learning management system for seamless delivery of the service to your students. And then the automated grade book posting is inherent to the system. We do offer two separate test banks for undergraduate and graduate academic programs. And when you sign up uh, to use any of Peregrine's, of course, online solutions, you get unlimited access to uh, your individual student results, ability to track student progress, and ability to run all of the uh, expansive reports that we make available to you. So you will get login credentials to the client admin site that is available to you 24 seven. But we have an amazing team of client, uh, client engagement advisors who, who are there and available to assist you, to train you, and to show you the ins and outs of how to run client admin. So we're not just leaving you with an access to client admin and um, you know, let you run with it. So there are many tools and we have live uh, team to help you to learn the uh, client admin, how to run it. Uh, benchmarking of uh, assessment results and scores with other institutions based on institutional demographics is built into the service. And so you will be able to compare your students' results, not only internally, but externally. We have an average for Indian business schools. We have an uh, aggregate pool for Asian schools, European and you know, US and so forth. So there's plenty of aggregate pools you can compare your students' performance against. And then we uh, are able to um, deliver this service through a secure platform. So you don't need to uh, uh, hire an exam proctor, which typically saves anywhere from you know, 40 to $95 more, depending where you are. But we're able to do so because of safety and security measures built into the system. One of them, for example, randomized um, exam question delivery from the test bank of thousands of questions. And we do offer you an inbound and outbound of approach, meaning pre and post test. And as an institution, you decide if uh, the post test, you know, at the end of the program, the outbound exam is the way for you to go. Or if you wanted to understand more of the value added of your program to your students' knowledge base, then you may want to uh, do some inbound and then outbound and so forth. The GBE assessment exams itself are available to you in English, British English, and they have been translated into um, uh, six different languages. So German, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Mongolian, and Russian. So when you are uh, assessing, or when any of the schools located in these uh, countries assessing their students uh, with the GB, really uh, actual knowledge is being assessed, not the competency and proficiency in English language. And that's why the comparison of uh, students' results across uh, different countries is, uh, uh, is you know, uh, quite uh, robust and reliable metrics. So this is the list of uh, the global business education assessment uh, topics that we offer to you. And then I have the 13th as custom topics, and I'll come back to you. But this is your core um, uh, business topical areas that constitute a business degree, right? Be it a bachelor's degree in business administration and management or master's in management. So in any way, you probably in some form or combination offering these topical areas to your students. And the customization comes from the fact that if you have a master's with a focus on management, you might you know, have an instrument that consists of eight uh, topics that are more, uh, you know, that map to your particular learning outcomes. So if you have another master's, but that's more heavy on uh, um, accounting and finance side, 
then you might have another assessment instrument that consists of a different set of uh, say eight to, 20, eight to 10 maybe uh, topical areas with a heavy emphasis on maybe accounting, uh, finance and you know, economics and statistics and so forth. So that's the flexibility and customization. Uh, if you have your own test banks, or if you have a very specialized, unique um, concentration, uh, and, and I'm sure you have your test bank questions, we can upload and create your individual uh, school's custom topic. We already have, as I mentioned, uh, India-specific uh, custom topics in the form of accounting, business finance, and legal environment of business. And so those are available to you. But if you have, um, you know, for example, in the US, I uh, worked with the Fashion Institute of Technology out of New York, New York City, and they had to have uh, uh, fashion merchandising. So they're the only school with that particular topic, but we were easily able to upload and integrate and offer it uh, along with the rest of the topics to the students. Now, each topic is composed of four to eight subject areas. So this is an example of business integration and strategic management. So what this does is when you select the topics, you have wealth of information and knowledge what is covered under each topic, right? So also when you're looking at your learning outcomes, programmatic learning outcomes, and when these topics are covered, this also helps you to uh, write uh, effective and efficient and measurable learning outcomes, but also align it much better between the content and between the learning outcomes and so forth. And the next level is uh, when you receive the reports, and that's what we are most known for, I'll show you the list of reports and I'll do a deep dive into a couple of them, then you are getting results not just by accounting, right, the overall topical umbrella category, not just for marketing, you will really get information for each of the performance levels broken out by subject areas. So I've mentioned that we do use the inbound and outbound assessment approach. And um, if you choose to do so, offer the inbound exam at the be beginning of the student's academic program, and then outbound exam at the completion of the student's uh, program of study, right? Then you will be able to get the comparison of inbound and outbound exam scores, which provides you with that direct measure of learning. That's the value added of your academic program to your student's knowledge base. And uh, schools can use this data for uh, a number of different purposes, right? Of course, continuous improvement, uh, identifying areas of strengths and weaknesses within your program, comparing your students' performances against the other aggregate uh, averages by institutional demographics, but also um, if you are, say, um, admitting students who performed at, um, say, 60%, uh, into entry of your program, and then you're graduating them at 75%, for example, right? All right, so that's good to know. But then if your students were entering your program at 30%, and then you're graduating them at 75%, now that's a great story to share with your um, stakeholders for recruitment, for retention, for, you know, if you wanted to reach out to the business communities and communicate about the quality of your program, that's another uh, data and metrics you can share with them. And uh, so that's kind of great way to show uh, what is the value of your program to your students. And then of course, the comparison of the cumulative results with other institutions you can use for academic benchmarking. And then we have a great number of schools that um, you know, have their students perform at the 95th percentile compared to all the Asian schools averages. We also have averages uh, by accrediting agencies. So, you know, all ACBSB accredited, IACB, AACSB accredited programs. And if your students' uh, results are consistently, you know, on par or above par of these um, um, quality assurance organizations averages, that's something that you can, you know, really use for your also promotional and marketing activities as well. And just for the sake of you, you know, uh, you setting a goal and then, you know, putting a plan together to reach that goal also, it's excellent for um, that use as well. So it is an online exam uh, with um, multiple uh, choice answers and uh, depending on how many topics you select and include in an instrument, uh, the size of the exam is going to differ. So say if you have uh, selected, um, you know, 15 topics with the three Indian plus all 12 uh, core business topics, then you're going to have an assessment exam of 150 questions, right? So there are 10 questions per topic. So these are randomly drawn and then um, each student gets 10 questions, but then you are assessing either hundreds of students or thousands of questions, students. So you get that good um, sample 
of student results. And uh, so let's see. Um, and you know, it's easy to integrate. It's automated. It's timed, and it's uh, you know very easy to navigate. Students cannot backtrack, and uh, you know all that information is there. So it's a really cool, robust uh, platform that we use. And then the next area I wanted to touch upon is um, what we're most known for is our, of course, expansive reporting capability capabilities. So this is the list of our re uh, reports that are available to you, and uh, so you use the reports, right? And uh, the point, as I've uh, talked about in our previous uh, workshop and today, is that the point of uh, conducting assessment, right, measuring student learning is you get insight and analysis into where your students are and how they're performing in different areas of uh, your program. You want to identify the areas of strengths and weaknesses, right? You want to set goals and you want to be able to, you know, improve the delivery and the you know, academic program of your institution. So this will provide you with detailed insight into your program. And then from there, you're going to use the results of your analysis of your student data. And of course, implement some changes, take some action. How can you improve upon uh, the performance levels when they needed to at your program? And then the beauty of it is you're able to see uh, if you've uh, instituted any changes, did uh, the changes have intended impact? So as you can see, we have the internal analysis report, the external comparison, the program comparison, student cohort comparison reports. Uh, there's the response distractor report. Um, I'll be happy to go in more detail with your team, with you on-on-one, -on -one. and I'll be happy to send you also sample reports so you get a better idea of what data information they provide to you. There's the longitudinal uh, analysis report, the aggregate extraction data for each of the different aggregates we offer you, which schools make up each of these aggregates, pairwise report, which is uh, individual student progress report. If someone has started with your program and completed, say, inbound exam, the pretest, perhaps you even conducted midpoint assessment and then outbound, that individual student is tracked through our system and you can have individual student progress report, which would be pairwise. I did want to mention the student survey and it's um, a complementary service with our outbound assessment. And I talked about direct measure of learning, right? Indirect measure of learning and uh, comparative measure of learning, external measure of learning, which is all could be attributable to Peregrine's GBE assessment. The next is uh, uh, with the indirect, we offer you a complementary uh, service to attach your student exit survey to the outbound exams. So the questions are your questions and it's a very robust and very flexible uh, uh, tool that you will be able to have these uh, survey questions as an open-ended questions or Likert scale or multiple choice. And then some of the questions could be indirect measure of your learning, right? So with one instrument, you hit multiple marks for meeting uh, these different types of measures of student learning. As I mentioned, um, as a Peregrine uh, partner institution, you get access to all your students' data and results through a client admin. And this is what uh, the landing page looks like. And then through the client admin, you're able to generate all these great reports. Just to give you some highlights, the internal analysis report, uh, you are going to uh, most commonly use it. And um, the idea here is you are able to compare uh, student performance results, as I mentioned, not only at the topical level, but also that granular detailed subject level, right? And it's uh, going to be based on the percent of scores and percentile rankings to determine if a student performance is below, at, or above desired thresholds established by the school. And then a week ago, we talked about the, you know, how to create, uh, how to define uh, effective and efficient and measurable learning outcomes. And also with each learning outcome, you are going to set your objectives, right? So uh, what is your goal for each of the learning outcomes? So in one of the examples could be 80% of your students to perform at 70% uh, or higher on Peregrine's uh, uh, external measure of learning, which is the GBE assessment. So that's how you tie to learning outcomes and how you tie to your learning outcome objective. Uh, with the external comparison report, uh, you can select up to five different aggregates within this uh, same report. And then of course, compare uh, results against uh, each of them for your benchmarking. 
So if you wanted to be in the top, you know, 5% of the, uh, you know, performance results by topic, by subject for all, you know, uh, business programs accredited by X accreditor or located within the Southeast Asia region or Asia region. Or maybe you want to compare to a uh, European average because that's where um, perhaps your students uh, graduate and seek employment. So there are multiple choices. And of course, the basis for uh, creating aggregate pools is uh, by region, by country, but also by type of institution, by academic degree program, you know, for public, private, and so forth, and then the accrediting organization and so forth. So there are great many options for you to select. I just wanted to show you, here's an example of a topic and subtopic analysis. In this case, it's a business uh, ethics. And so it consists of uh, these different uh, subject areas. So you'll get the average for the topic and then you'll have individual uh, metrics for each of the subject level area performances. So it's pretty visual. It's, uh, you'll also get, of course, tables that go with this uh, graphical representation. And then especially for the whole point of uh, conducting assessment and measuring learning outcomes is to use it for your continuous improvement processes to close the loop. And then the longitudinal report is, uh, you know, the report you want to see because in this uh, report, you can uh, include anywhere from two to four sets of results over time. And then you define what that, uh, you know, time period is, right? You can run it based on quarterly results, based on annual results, and depending on uh, how long you have been using these assessment results. And then you can get really good um, analysis of uh, where, you, where your program is relative to the changes that the program has uh, made over time. So this is your change analysis report is sometimes what I uh, talk about. And this is your uh, closing the loop sort of, um, report that you want to run over time. And then when students um, you know, complete the outbound exam, also inbound exam, but with the outbound exam specifically, students like to receive an exam completion certificate, right? It summarizes the results by topic, and it, which is also, again, broken down into subject-specific results. And then if a student has taken the pretest, midpoint assessment, and outbound all the results will be shown in this report, which is a great report to see where students have started, where they ended at the end of the program. So they can use it even for, uh, as part of their job application portfolio, something, especially if they're looking for, uh, say, a job that has some accounting responsibilities and they have performed at the 95th percentile of all the test takers, um, that's a great accomplishment. That's something they can share and they can use it as part of their uh, job application portfolio. So anything that helps, right, with the recent graduates in seeking employment. Um, so then, of course, uh, uh, administrators can download it. Um, uh, through the client admin site, but students typically receive it um, uh, through their email address they registered for uh, taking the exam, but also they can download it at the end of the uh, exam as well. So just wanted to see if there are any questions coming in or are we pretty clear, Tatatri? Um, no uh, questions uh, have come so far, but uh, definitely if you throw the floor open for questions, probably it will come. All right. And uh, one uh, quick thing I want to tell you is that uh, in India, when we were conducting these tests, which we have con conducted in quite a few places, um, the report uh, side is something which is not really fully understood. The exam pattern is fine, but the reports, what uh, the reports will provide, uh, what is the utility value of these reports mm. is something that um, you have covered quite a bit here. I think you need to emphasize a bit more on, on the reports, how these reports really help. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. So um, when you run the, uh, when you administer the exam, once you have completed the exam process, you first want to run the internal analysis report, right? This is where it's going to show uh, for each of your, say you have selected eight topics, for example, or 10 topics. For each of the topical areas, it is going to provide you results that are broken down by uh, subjects, but shows your students' performance. Here's an interesting thing. Because this is a comprehensive assessment tool, uh, you're not going to get your typical 80, 90%. 
So students are taking it in their senior year, you know, uh, sometimes it's integrated into their um, capstone course or it's the very last strategic management course that they take. And then so we're looking at the entirety of that student's knowledge, right, what they have learned and retained as a result of their studies at your particular program. So they've taken marketing as a business program, you want to produce as holistic persons you can in terms of these hardcore technical competencies. So uh, your average is going to fall anywhere from 60 to 75%. And, um, and you just need to understand that this is a comprehensive tool measuring what students have learned as a result of their studies at your program. And then um, say you have conducted 500 assessment exams, right? And then the idea here is you go to each individual topical areas. So accounting, say you are a business undergraduate program that has a pretty good reputation of graduating good quality accounting students. And then you wanna look at detail, okay, what is the overall score of your students at accounting, right? So if they are in the lower range, especially when you conduct the external comparison report, and then if you compare your students' results against the, say, all Indian schools average in accounting, or all, uh, say, an XX accreditor, um, accredited business schools, and they are not in the top, say, you decide what is your benchmark, but not in the top 20% within the range of those uh, aggregates results, then you really need to go and analyze, is accounting your top priority? Are you really delivering what you promised on accounting to your students? And especially if that's your area of specialization. So then you look at the overall topical uh, results and then you zoom in into these uh, subject area results. So and then subjects are again provided like this. So you will be able to see where are the weakness areas. And this example, information system is where students have performed at 55%, which is below the average for the business ethics of this topic, right? And uh, the top, the ones that are above is uh, the yellow entrepreneurship. Okay, students did well. Uh, and then the Navy is, uh, sorry, Navy was the information management information system. So those two are okay. What's dragging, um, for example, in this case, uh, your uh, results down is uh, the light blue, which is business economics, 47%. Um, and the, your average is 57 here, right? And then the red is um, human resource management. So how do you use this result, right? So you got this information and you can identify in terms of components, where your students well, where your students did not do as well as you want them to see. Then you look at your curriculum coverage and see, okay, we did, so for example, say you kind of proud of your students, a knowledge in human resource management, because that's what's demanded, what's, you know, your specialization, but then you're not doing as well as you could have, right, is what you conclude perhaps. And then you look at your curriculum and say, do we have enough coverage for human resource management? Is it because we're not covering the content you know, providing enough credit hours so that students uh, gain that knowledge. Or, you know, uh, coverage hours are limited. So you have so many things you need to teach and then you cannot give that up and devote more to human resource management. And then you look at the activities, exercises, you know, final papers or essays and presentations. Is there a way to incorporate more of the human resource management related topics so that you can get that intersectionality, right? So that's one of the ways to use this result. And then the next is now you are comparing, uh, for example, your uh, students' results against um, the aggregate averages, right? And then maybe the industry standard is uh, most programs are performing or students performing at a strong level at human resource management. So what you thought was your, um, you know, uh, your niche or your um, um, ability to provide better competencies on human resource management is not on par with the other institutions. So maybe you need to revisit what is your priority? What is your goal? So there are great many insights you can gain. And so that's one of the areas how you use. Next, how do you use it for accrediting, uh, meeting accreditation requirements, right? So for meeting your accreditation requirements, of course, it's not enough just to have collected your data. One way is, and that's why understanding, analyzing, and then sharing what you learned with your faculty or accreditation or assessment committee, and then take it to the next level of 
what do we do with this result, right? How do we improve or what do we want to improve? And then if you decide this is what we want to improve, then how do you improve? And then how do you improve comes, as I mentioned, in the forms of revisiting your curriculum or revisiting your activities, adding assignments. And then we have an amazing report that we call the response distractors report. And what that tells you is, um, so what we did is we took our test bank. And so there's, it's a multiple choice, as I said, question. You have one correct answer and you have uh, three or four incorrect responses, right? So for each incorrect response, we coded it to one of the types of five types of response distractors. So students answer this question incorrectly. And then this question is incorrect because it's due to calculation error or factual based error or uh, concept, con understanding of a concept based error or conclusion based error. So then you get this report that tells you where um, is the largest percentage of incorrect responses are coming from in terms of these response distractors. So if you see, so that's the next level after analyzing internal analysis, you know, external comparison report, you go to the response distractor report and see. So if your students are making, you know, high percentage of and statistically significant, which the report will provide you statistically significant incorrect responses relative to the test bank sample or sample of the school that decided to compare the students results against then you'll be able to see if your students are answering in picking incorrect responses x percent due to you know concept due to calculation based error now that's a simple you know error to correct right maybe your accounting students need a little more assistance with the uh, um, math for accounting students refresher course review so they get a little better in that regard or if your students are um, you know performing higher than the sample or the aggregate pool of comparison errors due to say um, um, factually based error that's again one of the easier ones but more complicated ones are concept based error or conclusion based error which indicates your students probably need more assistance with critical thinking with analytical abilities right so that means it's not just the curriculum coverage it's more that hands-on experience getting involved in projects maybe some experiential learning some group uh you know more of the tools they need to utilize in order to kind of hone their critical thinking analytical thinking it's good to have information but the next level is are they able to synthesize are they apply the knowledge that they have acquired into solving problems at hand so these are some of the ways uh, schools will be able to use the reports and thank you for an excellent question uh, just one other thing um, uh, the quite a few uh, colleagues have been asking this thing how does it help in terms of pedagogy in terms of faculty effectiveness in terms uh, of what are the specific uh -huh. fac faculty effectiveness like you just now pointed out that respond detractors report really helps mm -hmm. in understanding uh, where exactly the problem might be lying mm -hmm. especially take a school uh, for example which has been giving these uh, tests for uh, fresh batches for say last say six or seven years mm -hmm. uh, let's say so that's a longitudinally, if you look at it, it's a very large amount of data that, that they have, which also is linked to the faculty effectiveness and the course, uh, uh, the strength of the course, course itself, mm -hmm. course mm -hmm. content strength, as well as the pedagogy. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, could, we could possibly uh, be able to, uh, you know, focus on some of these aspects as well, because the data is uh, coming from the same source uh, the consistency or otherwise uh, can be calculated based on that. Mm -hmm. So how does it help? So I think you should uh, focus a little bit on that. Yes, on absolutely. Side. Absolutely. So um, we understand it's good to have the knowledge and information and it's good to identify what needs to be improved, the gaps. What do we do with it? How do we help uh, to uh, implement that change and what that change should be, right? So uh, in the example of the critical thinking, improving the analytical thinking uh, of your students, um, we came up with uh, several solutions. And uh, some of you may be familiar with our business school resource center. And uh, it's, um, it's an, a service where students or faculty use it as a resource to help students become um, critical thinkers and consumers of news, right? So this is uh, really helps faculty to engage their students and to help them to uh, develop those um, 
analytical critical thinking skills by reading current news. And then each of these current news articles, uh, if you're familiar, come with activities questions and quizzes and it even has built-in mini case um, studies and uh, so that's one way to um, improve and to tackle this uh, another example is um, especially with um, you know especially nowadays critical thinking right ability to analyze integrate synthesize what the st knowledge students have is important and we have um, um, just rolled out uh, a business strategy simulation game now this is truly hands-on pedagogical tool that faculty can um, augment their existing curriculum and content where students are uh, asked and tasked to use their thinking, use their skills, use their competencies and see how to really get their game through this simulation honed. And um, it would be really good to see uh, the results of uh, the assessment pre a strategy simulation game experience and post strategy game simulation, especially in the areas where, you know, critical thinking, analytical thinking has been the big part of the students uh, um, not doing as well on certain areas where they could be. And then uh, another area I wanted to mention is uh, uh, we're talking about technical skills, right? Technical knowledge, it's all great. It's nowadays more about how do you integrate it into real world problems, how you apply it. And so, as I mentioned, through B-School Resource Center, which keeps you regular activities and exercises to keep practicing that critical thinking, improving that analytical approach and being consumer of current business news. And then the strategy simulation is excellent. One way to sit down and, you know, get that, you know, concentrated focus and improving those competencies. Another one is uh, value skills, the soft skills uh, assessment and development tool. And I hope you'll join us and that will also help you with um, um, tools to develop those skills that have been identified. And it has a built-in action plan that really based on the data and the results helps you to put together a plan of improving upon those areas of say weaknesses and then uh, hold the students accountable and then make sure they progress. And then there are some milestones built into it. There are some you know, uh, people they can identify uh, as accountable for their um, activities and then within timelines. So these are the ways to um, you know, answer your question with what we are offering in terms of solution to take you to the next level. It's one more thing, uh, the data that is uh, uh, available based on these exam core subjects, the 12 core subjects are broken into so many other uh, subtopics. Now this data is uh, consistently um, available and it can be preserved and then uh, the schools themselves can internally do their own assessment and develop their own tools, right? I mean, that's possible. Absolutely. Uh, so we staunchly believe in uh, you owning your students' results and data. So as an institution, you can download all your students' data and results. And uh, we have, of course, uh, a, a long list of reports and analytical metrics and tools to provide your comparison. But as you've noticed, we don't do um, um, you know, student demographic related analysis. But if you wanted to conduct further analysis, uh, by all means, download your data away, cut and slice it and, you know, create averages and, you know, do the uh, groupings and then conduct your own analysis that meet um, your particular extra needs of understanding your students' results and performance and uh, using it for your other purposes at the institution. Yeah, one other thing, the student survey report that you're talking about, yeah. that is a customized one, right? And this, the schools themselves um, can customize this uh, student um, survey, but the results uh, uh, which are coming from this survey um, is also integrated into the uh, the final report that uh, you'd be sent, uh, you know, you'd be providing for the specific school in the, uh, what do you call it, in their uh, uh, web link, right? Is that something like that? Yes, yeah, so the student survey is a uh, kind of interesting um, feature. Um, the questions are your questions. We have a simple sample uh, list of questions you can include, but it's always custom. And uh, each questionnaire is uh, unique to the school and um, it's just how you want to use it. So at the end of the 
program, if a student is required to take an outbound assessment, right? Uh, your school, you put together a list of say eight questions, 10 questions, and the students are offered this survey at the beginning of the, before the assessment exam. So, you know, I recommend don't put questions that is going to stir up the memory of a, you know, lost laptop at a cafeteria <laughs> and the student is going to be upset and not perform as well. So, you know, pick your questions, I joke uh, wisely, but you can have questions, student satisfaction, student evaluation, students feelings about particular, uh, as I mentioned, if accounting is one of your topical, if your top uh, specialization areas, then ask a student. Do you think the student feels well prepared to go out in the job market and perform the duties of XYZ? That's your indirect measure of learning right there, right? And then in terms of the format, this is a very flexible tool. You can have, as I mentioned, open-ended questions. You can have, you know, just rank this, or you can have select one of these, you know, one correct or one response from the choice of five responses and then give us your feedback open-ended question and what we do is we summarize what we can summarize that was a numer numerical data and if it's open-ended questions we just list all of them and then as a school you get this student survey a uh, summary report which is quite handy and the nice thing is is i was going to mention if it's a if an outbound exam is a requirement for graduation which many of the schools do have it then you're going to get a hundred percent uh response rate on your survey when has it ever happened that 100 percent of your students <laughs> responded and turned in your <laughs> surveys right especially at the end of the student's academic career when their mind is already moved on uh, that's one other aspect. Um, the demographically, uh, demographically, that's if you're talking about 400, 500 schools across uh, the world, say about 80 or 90 countries, uh, but the same subject is same. Say for for example, business accounting um, or uh, any of the other uh, top management subjects. Now uh, the content uh, might vary uh, across the demography. Uh, so if uh, I'm giving this exam now, say on the same topic and then uh, subtopics, I'm answering all of that here in India, the results that is coming in uh, is, should be comparable to uh, across the demography, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what way can, uh, uh, can a school, for example, in India, uh, figure out uh, uh, how the other schools across uh, a certain geography is uh, performing or not performing? Is there a way in which you can uh, narrow down uh, that sort of learning? Yeah, so when uh, a school is conducting external comparison, they will be able to get comparison of a, a topical level, right? And that's why we provide the subject areas because not all schools are going to have all the different areas covered in the subject in their uh, topic. So say accounting is, uh, for example, if you have a program that's more focused on management, right? Focus more on soft skills and uh, maybe you don't cover as much of accounting. And if your students perform, uh, and then you probably cover just um, as part of, uh, just to keep it as a core, because you do have to know some knowledge of accounting if you're graduating in a business degree, right? But not going as in depth. Then uh, if your students perform not as, uh, uh, on par as some of these other averages, then you know why. That's why it's very important to understand your program, your learning goals, your priorities. So that's why we'll provide these reports by topic and by subject areas so that you can zoom in into the areas that are your focus. So it's really important to understand why you see what you see, right? And then at Peregrine, we have a team that's happy to sit down and review your data. And then if, so it's, um, when you look at, that's why we provide as much data as you, we can, so you can really know what to look for. So in a case of, but as I said, if accounting is your top and priority, if accounting is your specialization, you better be you know, performing at a higher level and covering uh, all that's uh, listed under the subject areas then um, you know you go to the next level of understanding results. But if it's not a priority, if it's just something that is part of the major requirement and uh, you know, your focus of the program is more on uh, you know, cr uh, critical analytical skills, soft skills, you know, workplace writing skills. And then if you're not focusing on devoting uh, resources to accounting, by all means, that's perfectly okay 
for you to not for your students not to perform at a, as high level as other averages. Now, how you use it for meeting your accreditation requirements? You write the narrative in your report, and with assessment, there's no such thing as bad results, right? Or bad, you know, um, numbers. It's all relative into uh, tied into your mission, your learning goals. So, for example. If you are, um, I'll bring the example of the US, you're working with the inner city uh, student population, it's a community college, and uh, your results are going to be different uh, from a college next door, which is offering four year business program to students who have been uh, highly selected. So that's why the inbound exam results becomes quite important because that tells you what your intake is, right? What are you doing with that particular student demographic with that particular intake? And, uh, and the result then will be judged, uh, the outbound results will be judged relative to the inbound results. Uh, you're muted still, Tatatri. In India, yeah. you have, uh, sorry, my mm -hmm. mistake. Uh, we also have the other uh, uh, issue, you would say it's an opportunity, you can say issue, issue, whatever, is that we have accreditation agencies uh, two of them, both are official accreditation agencies, NAC, uh, NAAC, National Accreditation Assessment uh, Council, and uh, you have National Board of Accreditation, NBA. Now, both of them emphasize uh, very, very strongly on student outcome. Mm. Uh, what we talk in terms of um, the, you know, uh, assurance of learning is definitely very much a focus of these institutions as well. So uh, these exams, uh, how does it work for these uh, two agencies, for example? We only have these two agencies in India right at the moment. Absolutely. You can use it as a part of your uh, assessment plan, assurance of learning uh, requirements, and you can demonstrate that you are graduating students uh, with the level of knowledge. And especially if you have the good Indian school average, this is a great story to tell with inbound, outbound, where are your students coming in, where are your students graduating in, and how much value added you bring to your students' knowledge. And uh, it'll, you know, the data doesn't lie. So relative to other schools, this could be your success story. If it's not a success yet, you can use it to become a part of a success story. And with the uh, uh, the national accreditors, um, they, you know, we all, all are in the quality assurance business and we all understand how to measure student learning outcomes. And this is one of the really uh, unbiased, objective, external uh, ways to measure. Yeah, from your own experience, uh, you have those six accreditation agencies which are regional accreditors in the US, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, how, how many of those accredited schools of these six are using uh, uh, using uh, this kind of data or this oh, kind of service? So absolutely. We have, what, over 550 uh, colleges and universities across the U.S. and globe using our assessment and other online offerings. So of the assessment, easily over 300 of them are assessment-related services, right? And then uh, the, those institutions, they all have uh, regional accreditation, institutional accreditation. It's a requirement for uh, specialized accreditation. So uh, we work you know, with all the institutions that are going through, you know, to start with business accreditors, but to get to business accreditation, they have to have had the regional accreditation. So every one of our US-based institutions and some of the outside of US institutions are accredited by one of the, their institutions, right? Their universities or colleges are uh, accredited by one, one of the six US regional accreditors. So we do have a separate uh, aggregate average uh, for uh, regional accreditors. So if someone wanted, we have University of North Alabama, they want to compare the students' results against all AACSB accredited programs. And then they also wanted to see how about the uh, SACS, Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, they can also do that. So we do have all of them represented. You have it as an aggregate or you have as a, as a single uh, platform comparison? Uh, we have them as individual aggregates, right? The SACS, the NIASC, the WASC. If not individual, yeah. it's just all US uh, average, right? right? So in that sense, okay. we have all of them and um, we have individual regional aggregates as well. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Okay. I uh, I think we are now coming to the end of our workshop in terms of time. I think so. All right. Uh, so it, it, I think we did have a long chat over here <laughs> between right. ourselves, but I'm sure there will be some questions um, that will be raised um, uh, even on email and uh, things like that. So far, I can't see any uh, chat box question or oh, so uh, a Q and A question. Right. So we had a good discussion. Thank you for the questions. I hope you, uh, the attendees, uh, have found value in our conversation and some of the responses. So that kind of segues nicely to the last question I had, which is, how can we help you? Right. And um, uh, as part, of, I haven't mentioned yet, as part of you, as a thank you to uh, attending our uh, workshop today, uh, we're happy to provide you with the guest access to the online uh, GB assessment exam. Give it a try, uh, share it with faculty only, not your students. And then this is part of your review process if you wanted to get a really feel, good feel for what the assessment tool looks like. And uh, as in our last workshop, uh, we have provided uh, a free copy of our Assurance of Learning workbook. It's a digital version. And uh, uh, please email me. I'd be happy to send you a copy. And this is a very comprehensive AOL workbook that covers ins and outs and goes beyond of what we discussed last Saturday. There are some great examples of direct measures, indirect measures, how to use the reports for your continuous improvement processes for meeting your creditors requirements and also uh, if you wanted to schedule a call just to discuss further anything that's related to accreditation assessment uh, I'd be more than happy to schedule that um, time with you and um, so uh, thank you very much I'm going to end the polling so if you wanted to reach out to me, oh, there's the slide about complimentary resources available to you that I've just mentioned. Um, if we didn't get to your questions, I know we had a great uh, extensive comprehensive discussion with Tatri. Thank you for that engagement. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to email me, Jemian Soren, that nice easy last name at peregrineglobal.com. Great, thank you very much for your time. And uh, our next session is uh, uh, in February, on February 22nd, Tathatri. And we'll send you information, it's on Monday, and look forward to uh, seeing you and uh, you along with your colleagues. And thank you very much, you have a great day. <laughs>